this morning. And I read in the New King James, even though in reality the passage I love is really in the King James. So if I slip and give you some thighs and thens and those, you know, or the hithers, that's because I was raised on the King James. You know, the world I live in teaches out of the New King James, so I'm adapted. But Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse 5, the, the word of the Lord begins to read. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. Yes, you're welcome to yes, you're welcome to stand. For they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, Pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm going to stop there. Let's leave your hand there and slide over to Luke. Chapter 17. I'm going to be on my phone, so I'm, I'm enjoying myself with the Bible this morning. Luke chapter 17, verse, we're going to read two verses, beginning at verse 20. Luke 17, Word, Bishop. 20 and 21. The word of the Lord begins to read. Now, when he was asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, see here, or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. So this morning, I'm going to be uh, kind of sharing from this thing, praying from the inner kingdom. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm going to ball it up. She's going she to work the text. I'm just going to ball it up. I give you the end. You want to know that you're a prophet and a teacher. The teacher. The teacher tells you what we want you to know, then shows you how to do it, and then goes back and asks you, do you remember what I just told you? So I'm going to give you the summation of what I'm going to be talking about. So if you have to leave, you will have the conclusion. And that is, we are going to be talking about this morning, a secret revealed. Praying from the inner kingdom. A secret revealed. And this is the secret that is revealed. In this passage, very familiar, we understand this, we call this the Lord's Prayer. Some Bibles call it a model prayer. Yes. But in this prayer, we have a sense. In, the, in, in, uh, in theology, when you're talking about prayer, prayer has dimensions, just like worship. There are dimensions or levels that you tap into where you go deeper and deeper. It's like going from faith to faith and from glory to glory, hope to hope. You, you, don't, you start on one level and you should keep ascending. But in reality, when we're talking about prayer, looking at Jesus' passage, it's not ascending like we're going up. It's ascending because we're going in. So you're going deeper and deeper into that kingdom that is within so in this prayer, he starts the beginning, the foundation of the prayer is thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, not my That's the foundation. Now we would normally think that would be the culmination because most of us are trying to you know, pursue the kingdom. So we think the kingdom is the end game. But if you look at how Jesus taught us to pray, 
He taught us to pray from first the position, like the second part is give us this day. I'm not talking about give us this day, but those of you who are called fivefold, that's a message for you. The give us this day comes not at the beginning, which is normally where we start to pray, it's the next ascent. So the next ascent, after you go into the kingdom and pray from the inner place, you come into a higher level, which is the give us this day. Because we can't know the this day prayer of what we need you to give us wow. if we have not understood thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So this morning I'm talking about the foundational principle. <laughs> My the God. foundational principle is praying from the inner kingdom. Inner kingdom. Before, it's, I'm not saying we can't have a car, a house, a husband. That's all I'm saying this morning. What I'm saying is, before I can get to what I need or what I think I need or what I think you need, I have to be in a position where I understand the purpose of prayer yeah. is for Thy kingdom to come and Thy will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's the primary purpose of prayer. Yeah. The end. That's like the end of my lesson this morning. I have some other things I want to tell you, but that's really the end. We are praying from the wrong position in the wrong ascent. The ascent of knowing what to ask for, because we really don't know what we should ask for, but he gave us an assistant. He gave us the Holy Spirit that's going to help us navigate through the next level of what we should ask for when we don't know. But if we do not know, that we have to tap into the inner kingdom first. Yeah, yeah. Because his kingdom needs to come. But it doesn't need to come out here. It needs to come in here. Ah. <laughs> See, I'm trying to can we go there and say step, step, up. Up. step, step up. up. Step up. Step up. Step up. See, we're talking about shifting upward in prayer. Yeah. Which really means shifting inward in prayer. So come on, Bishop. We're not praying from out here in. We're praying from the inside out. Ah. For something to drop into me from heaven, then I'm waiting for something out there to come in here. Ah. But when I was transplanted into the kingdom and he filled me with the Holy Spirit, which is what I call the, the birthing of the baby, like you know, when the doctor hears a baby crying, my Cheryl is, I forgot to warn y'all, Lord. Bless our ears. When you hear a baby cry, see, I don't really believe the baby's crying because they've been disconnected from the eternal. And they realize that they've been imparted into a world that is different and they've been separated from the Creator. So when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, ah. we're crying like the baby cries. Ah. Because there's something in me that realizes I've been reconnected to the eternal. Because the kingdom has come. And there's something in the body that doesn't understand it here. But there's something in the body that is not afraid when you're filled. Wow. Because they realize I've been reconnected to the kingdom. Wow. So what has come into me is that eternal seed that I need in order to navigate this prayer that Jesus taught us how to pray. Thy kingdom has come. Yes. Therefore, when I pray, my purpose is for the kingdom to come not out here because he's going to bring it from in here to out there through me, through you. We're the vessels that the kingdom is going to come in. So the step up is to realize you're not just praying incidentally. I mean, it's not happenstance. Prayer is not what we do as a, you know, a haphazard, secondary consequence of being saved. That's right. And it's not like the plan B, like when you get saved, you get a suitcase, and then you have a Bible, and you have some prayers. Prayer is the exhaling of the baby. You put the spirit in it, wow. and when I pray, I release it back to you. That's how breathing. Prayer is ruach. Prayer is breath. Prayer is life. That's how we survive. If we do not pray, we will suffocate. The kingdom has come. Wow. We never get the will out because we don't pray. The purpose of prayer is for thy kingdom to come and thy will to be done in me. And then I can ascend to the others. Jesus. Which is give us this day. You are Isn't that awesome? Yeah. And help me forgive. That's deeper. It's Glory. Deeper. Jesus. But the foundation is our kingdom come. Yes. <laughs> and I'm going to talk about that this morning. He teaches them that when you pray, there's going to be something you will need to battle with. And don't get 
the church. And when I say you, I mean us. We were going to battle with something. And what yes. we're going to battle with, he tells us, he says, listen, you're going to battle with hypocrites. In the Greek, that word means actors. Yes. Oh, wow. It means you're going to battle with people that act like they're praying yeah. and they're communicating with me. But it's really just a performance. When these people perform, wow. they have a method in which they demonstrate the performance that makes some people feel that they are really in tune and connected wow. with the kingdom. But it's really an act. And he said, when you pray, don't pray like that. Don't pray like the hypocrites because they love standing up in church. Yes. And they love standing on the street corner and they love being seen by men. Wow. And that is their reward because they're not praying for the kingdom to come. Yes. They're praying because they want someone to think they're in the kingdom and they get gratification by us believing that they're in the kingdom and they're not. Wow. And that's their reward. They don't want to be rewarded from the Father. They don't want the kingdom to come in their lives. They want us to sit around and watch them like we do at the movies, like we do at the theater. They enjoy the distraction of the kingdom, paying attention to them acting, and we're disrupted from our path because they sound good and they're in the right spot and they're always in the marketplace and they're always around a crowd of people. So we have to understand when we're talking about prayer. See, if I'm out there and I'm evangelizing, I understand what's going on. And I am equipped to a deal with that actor. And I'm going to say, this is real and that's fake. But when you're praying, you're vulnerable. You're not in a position to warfare like that in prayer because you're trying to connect to what his will is for you. So this individual is a distraction. Yes. They are a disruption. They are the ones that draw attention from you trying to connect to the Father. And they're always in your ear, in your way. They're, they're never in congruence. They're always the one voice when everybody else is together. They're always in some place drawing people over here when everybody's over here. They're always wanting to be seen with people. It seems like you can never give them enough affirmation. Why? Wow. Because in the church. Actor, when you see that hypocrite. Wow. That's good. Because that's their reward. In the Greek, it means they put it in, they see it, and that's what they got out. They didn't want anything from me. Whatever they see it, they got out. If they wanted applause, they got it. You ever see someone pray and they, the, the, the clap afterward was all they want? When they get their affirmation, that's all they want. They don't want the father in their life. They want us to be applauding them and appreciating how. Spiritual, they perceive themselves to be. But he says, don't be what like that. He says, don't be like that. He says, when you pray, and I, no, 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 no. this is what I want you to do. And this is where the Greek is too much fun and I don't read it. So this is where it's too much fun. He says, when you pray, the New King James says, when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut your door, Pray to your father who is in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Now, let me say what the Greek framework of this is a little different. It says, but when you pray, enter into the room of you. I see, I love that. Wow. And when you have shut the door of you, pray to the father of you who is in secret and the father of you sees in secret will reward you openly. When you open the door and pray of you. When you are willing to go inwards into that inner kingdom and tap into the God in here, he says, I am going to be in that place that is a secret to you. But when you're willing to go to the place, like I don't know where the place is. I just know I go in there. But wherever that place
this is, it's a secret. He didn't hear it from me, but he says, I'm going to meet you in that secret place in you. Wow. And when you get there and you talk to me, I am going to reward you openly because you met me in secret. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Work the text, Bishop. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Like when I hit my knees in the kitchen, I might be physically praying in the kitchen, but I'm tapping into him in a secret place. And I can't tell you what room in my soul that I'm tapping into him, but I feel his presence and I say, how are you there? Because I'm in the secret place. I'm willing, if you're willing to open yourself up and not be an actor, but seek me and realize I'm not just out there. But I'm living in here, and you're willing to go in to find me. I'll be waiting in that secret place in you. And you will know that you met me because I'm going to demonstrate that you met me outside of my Wow. That's they know that I have prayed how for the Father's attention because outside of you, I'm going to demonstrate what prayer really is. But I didn't tell anybody. Oh. You see, the, the actor, they said all oh, those things in front of this not coming up. I have met you in the place. And because you were willing to come into that place, I am going to demonstrate outside of you what the power is of meeting me in secret. Go into the room of you, and I'll meet you in that room, and I'm going to reward you. And that definition, reward means I'll do it. Jesus. You went to the place, I'll do the reward. We haven't even asked him for anything yet. Just meet me there. If you go into the place, I will reward you for coming. Knowing that I was in you, I will reward you because you know where I live. Yes, yes. Glory to God. My God. That's good. And the Father who sees you, everybody say sees. Sees. We would think that he's listening. He's not eavesdropping on your prayers. He's not eavesdropping on my prayers. He's watching. Fight to be prayerful. That doesn't, I'm not saying you have to fight to pray. 
I'm saying you have to be disciplined and you have to treat it like a muscle and you have to be committed. Wow. And in the Eastern Church, we say it like this. When you are praying and your mind trails off, wow. don't snatch your mind and discipline it as this to say, why don't you stay focused in prayer? We teach that you are to gently bring your spirit, your mind back and continue to play gently because the mind is trying to capture the inner workings of the spirit and it's wow. easily distracted. We have to apprehend our mind. We have to let this mind be us. It is not inherently in us. We have been trained to multitask. We have not been trained to be focused. We're trained to do two or three things at one time. We're not trained to have this one thing that I desire of the Lord and that that I see. Come on, wow. Because you were willing to go there, but he's going to reward you 
us out. Hallelujah. 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 Right, let me shut down here. I'm supposed to be talking to you this morning. No, you're good. Blow back. Good. 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 No, not my speaking. Let me just share this with you. He says, Therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows. Everyone say knows. Knows. Knows the things you have need of before you ask. Let the beginning of the do it again. For the father, this is that little man, the glory of God. For the father, knows the things you have need before you ask. Yeah. Before you ask. In the Greek, that word means I see what you need. I see what you're saying. Before you pray, he's saying, I get it. You don't have to convince me. I just know you. In the secret place where only I That's good to myself. I don't myself. remember because we think it's more than just showing up. We're intimidated by the spirit within. Help us, Jesus. Because we've been taught to be afraid of God. It's not a paradox. We've been taught to be afraid, but now we're full of it. We're afraid of who we're fearful of. We've been trained that I can't approach you, and yet I'm filled with you. But I'm not supposed to be filled with you, because I know I'm not holy. Now, what are you doing in this unholy vessel? Oh, God. And I should be judging you, because you know what I did, and you know who I am, and yet you told me to come and meet you, but when I come, I know you're going to judge me, because see, there's so much stuff that listen. Jesus didn't address it that. He says, who do you pray? Yeah. And I'm here to tell you, he's trying to teach us something. When you pray, he didn't say, my God, my God. He said, when you pray, pray out. When you hit your knees, let me free you. When you hit your knees and you're willing to hit that place, you're not praying for yourself alone. Oh, God. Our Father. Jesus. We're in this together. When you hit your uh, knees, uh, uh. or you stand and all I say stand because of this awareness of Christ within, whatever the prayer position is, if you're praying, you're praying corporately, whether you believe it or not, you may be in your seat. You're not by yourself. You're not alone. You're just in a secret place. Oh, God. But when you're praying, you're feeding everybody. 
Jesus. Jesus. Come on now, please. Help me, help me. Don't make me work hard. Because we believe in the intercession of the body. We believe he's standing there interceding for, for us. And because we believe that, we believe that he's not up there doing We're doing that. When you pray and you allow the kingdom to be manifested in your life, all of us benefit. Every cell in the body benefits. Jesus. So you being willing to go into that secret place in you and allow the kingdom to come, we all get an infusion of kingdom. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank <laughs> you. 
the speak, Jesus. The kingdom of God is in you. The kingdom of God does not come with observation. You and wow. I are the visible representation, yes, God. manifestation, realization of a kingdom.
that. I wanted to share with you a story. And I will speak this story to the Lord. I want to leave you with this impartation that you may not fully comprehend yet, but I'm declaring it over your life. Yes. I'm declaring it because it is true. It is true, and even though the prophetic sometimes is unclear. So if I said you're a bone, it would be unclear. It would be kind of confusing. So I'm going to let someone, I'm going to allow the scriptures to communicate why it's so important for you to see yourself as a bone. A bone in the skeleton has a place. You cannot put one bone in the leg in another spot unless that bone is, is gone. And then you have to graft in something else. But a bone has a position, it has a place, it has a space. It has and, and it doesn't matter. If I'm walking, I don't need hand bones. Wow. And, and if I'm clapping, I don't need feet bones. And even though we think of the body as muscle and all of the aesthetics, you guys told me today I'm coming to be a carpenter. But we were talking about remembering. It's, you know, one of the challenges in our memory is sometimes the blood doesn't flow to the brain, you know, we don't have the oxygen because we're not aligned in the right spot. So the blood's not flowing correctly, and it's being diverted. And if the brain doesn't get the right oxygen, if it doesn't get the right ruah, if it doesn't get the right spirit, the right breath, then it suffocates. Wow. So the body has to be in place. But we kind of think of the body as muscle. We think of it as aesthetic, as being beautiful or unbeautiful, or blemished or not blemished. But the part of body talks about us, I can't be a carpenter this morning, the part of what talks about is bones. No one says, well, oh, that's a beautiful x-ray. No one loves bones. No one wants to talk about bones. Well, you know, when you break your foot, people see you in a cast, they talk about the cast, but they never talk about the broken foot. Because there's something about breaking a bone that is, you know, unless you experience it, you don't understand how it throws off your equilibrium and how it shows you in the it's power so in the bones. Come on now. Over you today, then I want you to Can receive you and understand you are a bone. You have a place. Not an incidental place. Not one or two or three spots. You have a place. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I have a space. I have a spot that allows this body to flow and work well. Yeah.
Uh huh. Come on, come on. He gathered the whole family of Israel. When I die, all of you will make sure. Tell the children because this may have to go on for a while. Yeah. I want everyone here, and I want to make sure every generation understands yeah. when you are released from Egypt, and you will, even though what he was talking about prophetically was not the moment he was living in. Wow. Wow. Jesus. Some ancient texts say that he was buried above ground, like in uh, a mausoleum, so that we constantly see that he was not going to move. That when you all move, you got to come and get me. That he was a representation of a faithful declaration that they then had to live by because every time they saw Joseph, even though they may have been suffering, Joseph's body reminded them when you get out of this situation. Oh, you coming out. You come home. Come, come home. home. So I'm talking about praying from the kingdom. That That's your good. remnant will pray and speak for you. Yes. Even if My you're God. physically not there. Yes. There yes. is a cry that yes. a person yes.
let my life stay in Egypt. Jesus. Mm. The purpose of prayer. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom will come. This not come with observation. As the Pharisees would say, we see, we see. No, you don't see. The kingdom is within you. The kingdom is within me. And he's saying, don't leave my bones in Egypt. Come out from among them. And be Separate. So that people can see, I am real. I am living. I am powerful. I exist. You don't have to preach it out there. We have to live in here. That's what we pray to. In that secret place in you, yes. to reward you openly yes. by demonstrating His reality in your life. By demonstrating His reality. Amen. I didn't want to tell you she was on the way. I, 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 I 